Over the past few weeks, as we have discussed the war in Ukraine, a recurrent theme has been the issue of energy, the issue of supplies of natural gas from Russia to Europe to many other countries. But what we see also is that a similar conflict, similar tension is taking place also in North Africa, involving countries such as Algeria, Morocco, as well as Spain, and of course the United States. We'll be talking about all this in this episode of Mapping Fault Lines. We are joined by Prabir Prakash, sir. Prabir, a lot of uh, events happening in this region. So, <clears throat> one of the latest events is that Algeria, which uh, used to which used to supply gas to Spain, it suspended that in uh, October last year. But now Algeria is very concerned that Spain intends to supply natural gas back to Morocco using one of those pipelines. And this is there's a lot of history in this conflict. There's Western Sahara, the struggle for sovereignty over there. But uh, let's take the issues one by one. First of all, could you just take us through the major tensions right now between Algeria, Spain and Morocco? Well, as you said, the major tension between Algeria, Morocco and Spain is not to do with gas. It is to do with Western Sahara. Yeah. And the fact that in the Saharawi Republic, the Polisario, various versions of this have been there, that Morocco has not got sovereignty over this part. There has been an independence movement which has declared independence, which most countries have either not recognized but kept their hands off, not getting in, involved in it, saying the people of the Republic have to decide where they want to go, and rejected, at least officially, Morocco's claims. Now that Morocco's claims have been accepted by the United States and recently Spain, Algeria is pushing back because it sees this as disturbing the equilibrium in North Africa. And of course, Algeria has gas, which it supplies to Spain. It is the, I think, the key supplier of uh, gas and uh, fuel to uh, Spain. And I think about more than 40 percent. In 2021, 43 percent. 43 percent came from Algeria. So, given the fact that Europe is facing a gas crunch because of Russia, energy crunch because LNG or oil, both are in short supply in the world today. The fact that the U.S. is trying to also muscle into this market, looking at uh, Russian oil and gas being squeezed out of Europe. So if you also are going to annoy your other major supplier, in this case Algeria, which is what Spain seems to have done, you're really uh, riding for a fall. And of course, the argument that Spain has given that we will send independent gas, which is not from Algeria uh, to Morocco, and the gas that comes from Algeria, we will not send. Now, these, as you know, are rather difficult to establish because ultimately it's a common pipeline. Therefore, of course, the gas is mixed. Whether you're getting from an LNG terminal, putting it in the pipeline, or getting it from the bed gas uh, pipeline, putting it to the common pipeline, of course, gases will mix. So what you have is input, output. That's all you really get. Therefore, to claim that this is, can be separated, the two gases can be separated, is actually a banker's fiction or an accounting fiction. That's all that it is. And Algeria, therefore, has raised certified that each molecule that is going is not Algerian gas. So both these are really not feasible. The question is, Spain, why is it doing it? And I think that's a far more interesting question. It is also because Morocco has become much more important in North Africa. In fact, in Africa, because the French, the, the, the really the colonial powers in uh, Francophone Africa, at the moment depends more on the United States. And you can see the AFRICOM has become quite active in Africa, particularly Northern Africa. And Af the United States sees Morocco as a linchpin of their North African or Af West African venture. So recognizing the importance of Morocco, they have got them to sign with the Abraham Accords. Also in return for Morocco's recognition of Israel. Yes, there has been a quid pro quo. Recognize Israel and will recognize your claim to Western Sahara. This has been the US right. uh, ploy. But I think behind that, there has been a much deeper engagement with Morocco, using Morocco as the new gendarme of US imperialism as well as French colonialism. I think these two are merging together. And there, you will see that 
uh, Morocco is playing a much more important role than what it did earlier because of the weakening of French colonialism mm -hmm. or its colonial adventures or its colonial empire. Right. Even today, a number of countries in uh, Africa have their currencies linked to the, uh, to the French, in fact, budget, so that there is a completely neo-colonial grip over their economies. So I think the United States' desire to see Morocco play a more important role is also a very big issue over here. Right. But I mean, in this context, the, like you said, the other interesting aspect is the fact that the U.S. is also trying to, you know, enter the energy market in a large way as well. So we, we do see that in recent times, the United States has become Spain's largest supplier of natural gas after Algeria stopped some of the supplies last year. So in the context of the Ukraine war as well, how do we understand this attempt by the U.S.? Does it have that kind of capacity? Where is it coming from? Well, you know, the fact remains that Europe is dependent on oil, natural gas, liquefied natural gas, either on West Asia or on the United States or on Russia. Right. These are its three major sources. And I'm, I'm counting, you know, West Asia, North Africa together in this, in, in the larger context. It's a common geographical entity, so to say. So if you look at these three areas, obviously, if you want to cut Russian gas out, you have to increase the others. The problem is that the U.S. cannot supply to a pipeline. It is rather far away from Europe. So therefore, LNG. But LNG requires LNG handling facilities. And though Spain has built a fair amount of LNG facilities, for example, like in uh, upper north of Europe, Poland has built, or east of Europe, Poland has built more LNG facilities. So have certain other countries. But that is completely inadequate to meet the amount of gas that Europe requires. That is why they are so slow to impose sanctions on Russia. They know the consequences. It also has a consequence of another kind. If there is a shortage of oil and gas, then of course prices go up and we can see whatever Russia might have suffered because of the sanction in terms of quantity, it has gained in terms of price. Right. In fact, more than compensated with the price rise that has taken place. And you can see therefore ruble strength strengthening against the dollar. While the currencies that have fallen is of course the euro, which has fallen against the dollar, and so is the Japanese yen. These are all countries which need to import gas and oil. So you already see the equation changing, but United States cannot fulfill the amount of energy requirement that Europe has, but at the same time, the consequence of Europe's, not of the United States. Right. Unfortunately, Europe seems to have uh, decided that it is going to commit harakiri, at least an energy harakiri, in order to subserve U.S. Uh, goals. And U.S. goals are essentially, as their uh, leaders have clearly now said, from Biden down to their secretaries of state, defense, that regime change, change of Putin as uh, the head of you know, Russia, Russia, and also uh, weakening Russia is the prime interest in Ukraine. So given that, I think the energy is supplies the other part of the uh, puzzle, that weakening European Union, long-term dependency of European Union on the United States is also part of what they're attempting to do. And energy is very central to that effort. Right, absolutely. And Prabir, again, coming back to the North African region, in between all this, like we've said, one major casualty is the cause of the Sahrawi people because what we see is that in this uh, geopolitical game, Morocco, like you said, has become a key linchpin of the US strategy, of the European strategy. And so the price for that is that the aspirations of the Sahrawi people are suppressed despite the fact that the UN has, there is a, there's a recommendation for a referendum which has never been done. So in that way, what the Sahrawi people are facing is quite similar to what the Palestinians are facing as well. We have, or what the Yemeni people are facing. Exactly. So, so people sort of being, you know, sacrificed because the ruling classes in some of these, some of these countries are so important for global imperialism. And when it comes to that, all the talk about the rights of the people which you hear in Ukraine, you do not hear exactly. in the Sahrawi People's Republic, Western Sahara, you do not hear about it in Yemen. So you can see, of course, you don't hear about it in Palestine at all. In fact, if you raise the issue of Palestine, you will be called anti-Semitic. Right. So given all of this, the hypocrisy of the West, particularly the leading Western powers, are clear. The question is, why is the other powers in the world at the moment silent? 
in raising that if you want an improper quote unquote rule based international order, it is returned to the United Nations. But that is what of course the Western powers don't want to do. A G20, but we will not invite Putin to the G20, various other things. So that the rules of the game is what we will decide. But you know, Morocco is a very special player over here and you must recognize that. It, after its relationship with Israel, establishing uh, relations with Israel, it also bought Pegasus on this. Absolutely. And in fact, it, uh, Pegasus software that it used probably is the one which infected the French leadership's phones. It, it also seems to have been uh, something that they used against even the Spanish leadership. We don't know. But Pedro Sanchez's phone was infected. Okay, at the same time, it also seems that Spain also used it. The government uses it against the Catalonian uh, forces, right. which want independence. The Basques who want independence, particularly the Catalonian uh, movements, which want independence, who are supporting his government. So you also have this. Pegasus imbroglio, which involves both Spain and Morocco, and we do not know to what extent Morocco is willing, because if it could infect the phones of the French, who are not adverse to Morocco, it does seem to be that they love playing with this new toy they have got. So can they find out what the Spanish Prime Minister is doing, what the French President is doing, and so on. So it's a, it sort of also raises important issues with respect to, to spyware that is Israel Absolutely. has so freely lent uh, into the world, lent within quotes. Part of it to increase its political uh, penetration, part of it is purely money. Right. And many reports, of course, saying, Prabir, that Morocco is one of the harshest police states in the world, especially when you go to Western Sahara. It's still a monarchy. Absolutely. Thank you so much for talking to us. And that's all we have time for today. We'll be covering many such issues in future episodes of Mapping Fault Lines. Until then, keep watching NewsClick.